in one week alone, boxing have went through more corruption than other sports go through in an entire decade, all thanks to the WBC. Now, the WBC are in jeopardy to be banned from the sport of boxing due to all of the corruption within, which we have an entire list of corruption that's been publicized, let alone what's happening behind closed doors. I mean, you can just imagine. Would you guys believe that at one point, the WBC was recognized as the most prestigious belt in all of boxing till Marie Suleiman came along? Now the WBC belt went from the most prestigious belt to the most disgraceful. It went from the most honorable organization to the most shameful organization. That's a quick turnaround. At this moment in time, we don't know if the WBC is a cartel or a boxing organization that cares about the health of the fighters to make sure every fighter is fighting on an even playing field. We truly don't know which one is it. In fact, a Hispanic reporter had this to say to the WBC. In the 58 years of the WBC, they about to make their worst mistake. Endorsing Oscar Valdez versus Robson fight. A boxer has just died in Montreal, which he's referring to Zabata, I believe. If something happens to the Brazilian, the WBC may close its doors. In other words, be banned from the sport of boxing, which the WBC took a huge gamble there for Canelo Alvarez team. Now, luckily for the WBC, nothing happened to Robson because he ended up winning the fight. However, they still robbed him in the process. I guess fighting Oscar Valdez, who was on steroids, wasn't enough. They had to rob him utilizing the referee and the judges as well. Keep in mind, the judges and the referee were chosen by the WBC. In fact, the referee and one of the judges that had the fight 117 to 110, they pretty much were WBC employees. In other words, the fix was in. So if Robson wasn't going to knock out Oscar Valdez, as long as Oscar Valdez was going to make it to the final round, his hand was going to be raised. With the facts being laid out, I'm only going to briefly talk about the main corruption inside of the WBC, because if we talk about all of it in depth, I'm going to need all day and all night. Since there's a mountain of corruption that Mauricio Suleiman is in charge of, now I'm going to start off with the most recent incident, Oscar Valdez, the fourth fighter in Canelo Alvarez camp that tested positive for PEDs, and the third fighter in the Canelo Alvarez camp that wasn't punished for cheating by the WBC. Keep in mind, this is only the Canelo Alvarez camp, not the entire sport of boxing, which means in one camp alone, the WBC defended four cheaters. That means the WBC endorsing cheating in a sport where you can physically kill your opponent. With the facts being stated, when Oscar Valdez failed for PEDs, he blamed testing positive for Funtermine on Air Boutique, where the WBC happened to defend his claim as well. Come to find out that there is no Air Boutique in the world that has the drug Funtermine in it which exposed Oscar Valdez for cheating than lying. And it also exposed the WBC for covering up for a cheater in Oscar Valdez. The PED fronter mean you have to have prescription from a doctor to even get your hands on that drug, which is why the excuse of the herbal tea is more shameful than Oscar Valdez actually cheating because it's so laughable and pathetic. To make matter worse, Oscar Valdez failed to submit the herbal tea to the drug testing agency. He never submitted this herbal tea to Vada after he was requested to in order to verify his innocence because he's clearly guilty. However, that didn't stop the WBC from going all out to defend a cheater. Like the usual, the WBC president Suleiman came out and said that in taking this PED funter me, is equivalence of drinking three Red Bulls, which now, according to his standards, Funtermine is not a PED, just like when he increased the Combuterol limit in order to allow Canelo Alvarez to take this steroid and still be allowed to fight legally. 
Now, first of all, the three Red Bull comparison is not true. Second of all, if you drink three Red Bulls every day for a month, you're gonna die or you're gonna fly to heaven. One of the two. Drinking one Red Bull a day is already bad for your health, let alone three. More importantly, here is an expert when it comes to PEDs and steroids, Victor Conti had to say. It is well known that Funtermine is in fact a PED. The fact that it's prohibited on fight night proves that it enhances performance. The WBC is wrong. It increases speed, strength, and endurance, plus aids rapid weight cuts. Man, that's the definition of PED. That's exactly what steroids do. But let's keep going. Did the WBC possibly drink three Red Bull drinks and then make such an intoxicated decision? Question mark. Does the WBC think that all of boxing is stupid? Question mark. We live in the world of Google, not the cave age. Science have proven that Funtermine is a PED. Is the WBC a dictatorship or what? Question mark. We have a violation of VADA standards, standards that the athlete agreed to comply with, standards that the WBC say are needed to ensure clean boxing. The WBC has agreed to and used VADA prohibited substance list for years until now. Why? It's all about cash money. The WBC needs to be held accountable for their unacceptable behavior. Boxers need to unite and stand up against this outright fraud and corruption. Oscar Valdez signed and agreed to obey VADA rules. If enough boxers agree, a class action lawsuit against the WBC should be considered. And that's a fact. To save boxing, everyone needs to petition to Congress in order for the government to run the sport. Take 5 or 10% of what boxing make in order to do so. To start tournaments clean tournaments and investigate all of these corrupted organizations who idiotically say Combuterol or Funtamine is not a PED. Therefore, why are these PEDs banned by the Olympics, by VADA, so on and so forth? It's a rhetorical question because it's so mind-blowing for the WBC to allow a fighter on PEDs to fight, then cover up the fact that he missed weight. They lied that he made weight, even though he didn't. He had to come back two hours later in order to make weight, which by then they could have easily messed with the scale. Then fight night to put icing on the cake. They robbed Robson, who beat all of the corruption he was going up against by utilizing the referee and the judges. Now you see when Monroe tested positive for PEDs, a black fighter he wasn't allowed to fight the WBC suspended him meanwhile the WBC approved Oscar Valdez to fight after failing for PEDs and went out of their way to defend him because he have the complexion for the connection to get the ultimate protection that hope insurance is better than Geico the WBC are racially biased remember they defended Margarito for loading up his gloves against Cotto and many more. Even when he got busted against Sugar Shane Mosley. They defended Alejandra Jimenez even after she failed for steroids fight night. They defended Luis Neri, Martinez, Canelo Alvarez, and other five Mexican fighters that failed for PEDs, which got overwhelming so they ended up increasing the computer roll limit when it comes to drug testing so these fighters could cheat legally. If that wasn't enough, they also created the NBF No Black Fighters Witness Protection Franchise, a belt made to blacklist all of the fighters on the coincidental list from fighting the fighters on the hope list. The WBC also defended Tyson Fury for cheating by tampering with his gloves where the WBC president Suleiman lied by claiming he was in Tyson Fury dressing room watching him. Even though when Tyson Fury cut off the camera in the dressing room, Mauricio Suleiman was nowhere to be found.
Now, I could go on all day and all night, but like I said before, the main point here is the WBC endorses cheating and they are racially biased, which is why they need to be investigated. The WBC officially stands for We Be Cheating, the World Boxing Corruption Organization. Here is what Vada had to say to the WBC about all of this corruption. It's an embarrassment and degrading to fighters how little PED testing is done by U.S. commissions. Vada testing has always been fighter driven, which Floyd Mayweather is the pioneer of. Vada added, by those who want a clean sport. Hopefully commissions wake up. National government oversight surely needed. And last but not least, subscribe below and click on the notification bell. Here is what Vada is all about. Welcome to VADA. Congratulations on your personal commitment to clean sport and fairness. VADA, the Voluntary Anti-Doping Association, was created because there was little consistency in professional combat sports and inadequate testing for performance-enhancing drugs. VADA was created for fighters. We're not here to catch you. We're here to educate and support your boxing career. VADA's board has over a hundred years of combined experience in combat sports and anti-doping. Our board includes medical professionals, former commission members, and anti-doping experts whose goal is to help fighters. In this short video, you'll learn what VADA can do for you and your career, plus your part in making the program work for you. It's your body, your health, your career. As a part of VADA, you have access to valuable tools and information that will benefit your career as well as your overall health. One of the primary services VADA provides is unannounced random testing. Your VADA membership is a firm statement that you are committed to clean fighting and don't fear being tested. Many experienced fighters have never been tested for performance-enhancing drugs, and if you have, whether post-championship fight, as an amateur in the Olympic program, or some other instance, it's doubtful the testing was as extensive as VADA's. In VADA, athletes are eligible to be tested 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. This could be at your gym, your home, or anywhere else you might be. Sometimes you'll receive a call before a VADA testing representative arrives, but they don't always call first. They may simply show up at the places listed on the whereabouts form or VADA app. Because VADA's random testing is unannounced, testers must be able to locate you within an hour of their first contact attempt. To make sure this happens, VADA requires a few important things from fighters. First, you must completely fill out the VADA application. In the VADA application, you provide detailed information about where you live, where you train, and information for key contacts. Key contacts include your trainer, partner, promoter, and manager. Second, you need to complete the whereabouts form to give VADA as much advance notice as possible when you travel. This form tells VADA where you are traveling and staying. You'll need to complete these forms on the VADA website. After that, if you have any changes in travel plans, you can update your whereabouts form on the VADA app, which is available on Apple and Android devices, or you can email Margaret Goodman directly at margaret at vada-testing.org. Finally, keep your cell phone handy at all times so you don't miss a VADA call. If we can't locate you within an hour of the first attempt to contact, it will be recorded as a missed test. Missed tests will be reported, and fighters are subject to potential sanctions and removal from the VADA program. This rigor is part of what makes a VADA athlete so respected within his or her sport. You will need to provide VADA with a list of any medication or supplements you are taking or plan to take. Check the supplements against VADA's prohibited substance list to make sure you aren't accidentally taking a banned substance. Beware, however, that many positive tests are caused by supplements that don't actually list the prohibited substance on the label. VADA annually publishes a list of prohibited substances and methods each year. This list varies from the World Anti-Doping Agency's list in two important ways. First, unless requested by your commission, VADA has no out-of-competition list. Under VADA, you are eligible to be tested for anything on our prohibited list. That includes stimulants and narcotics at any time, not just during competition. Second, VADA does not test for cannabinoids, marijuana, or THC unless requested by the commission where you'll be competing. 
As a fighter, you have to take responsibility for what goes in your body. Do you know all of the ingredients and the substances you take? Take a moment to consider the medications and supplements you take that you will need to disclose to VADA. Remember, it's your body, your health, your career. On the VADA website, you can watch a short tutorial on doping control testing. A certified Claridium doping control officer and blood collection officer will go through a blood and urine sample collection according to the international standard for testing. Here's the video link for reference. There are times as an athlete that you will be under the care of a physician. Make sure that your doctor checks the VADA prohibited list in advance of prescribing medication or treatment. If there's a necessary medication or treatment that's prohibited, then you must submit a Therapeutic Use Exemption, or TUE, request form in advance of treatment. The form is available on the VADA website at vada-testing.org. Your request is reviewed by an independent physician to determine whether the requested treatment is necessary or if there are non-prohibited alternatives. As the review can take weeks, it is important that you submit this request as early as possible. If you require emergency medical care, VADA may excuse a prohibited treatment or method, but we require a copy of the medical documentation. After a test, you might be thinking, where do the results go? Your results will typically go to you, your representatives, the commission in which you're competing, the Association of Boxing Commissions, or ABC, BoxRec, the official record keeper of the ABC, the WBC, if you are enrolled in the Clean Boxing Program, your promoter, and the sanctioning body if you're competing in a title fight. If your enrollment was for testing leading up to a bout, the results would also go to your opponent's promoter. VADA does not publicly report results and never discusses your results with the media. If you receive an adverse result, you'll get an email with the test results, the doping control form from the day you tested, and the actual laboratory report. Contact VADA if you would like the B sample tested at your expense. VADA does not adjudicate results. That will be up to the commission where you hold a license or the sanctioning body where you hold a title. VADA knows that all fighters use supplements and vitamins. You are responsible for anything you take. Remember, it's your body, your health, and your career. VADA gives you the chance to find out the risk of your supplements and the manufacturer. Go to DFSAxis.com and select the VADA logo. Use the passcode VADA12. As a VADA fighter, you can have your supplements tested and certified. If interested, contact VADA at info at vada-testing.org or margaret at vada-testing.org. As a part of VADA, you have access to a wealth of additional resources, information, and expertise. These include Global DRO. Global DRO is a free site that can tell you if your over-the-counter or prescription medication is on the prohibited list. Go to globaldro.com to access this tool. For general questions and to update VADA on travel plans, email info at vada-testing.org or margaret at vada-testing.org. We are here to help and would love to get all of your questions answered. Finally, you have access to a series of informational videos on topics like supplements, concussions, fluid and weight management, and side effects of performance-enhancing drugs. You can access these through VADA's YouTube channel, VADA-Testing.